Okay, uh, thank you. So I will uh, continue talking about uh, uh, geometric inequalities in spaces of uh, non-positive curvature. Uh, today will be a little bit of a change of pace. So for one thing, I'm just going to use only uh, chalk. It uh, forces me to, prevents me from going too fast. And uh, I'm going to speak on the convexity and uh, rigidity of hypersurfaces. So this is also a bit of a, a change in pace. Uh, first two lectures were centered around this uh, comparison formula and uh, its uh, applications. Um, here I will derive uh, uh, more uh, inequalities, but uh, uh, it, won't, it won't be so computationally uh, intensive. Uh, it won't be directly working with uh, differential forms. Okay, so uh, first I'm going to uh, start with uh, convexity theorems. So uh, what are these? Well, first of all, uh, so throughout the lecture, I have uh, this uh, hypersurface gamma and uh, nu uh, is uh, normal uh, to it. So this is something of uh, dimension n minus one in an n-dimensional manifold. And uh, also we assume that this is a Carton uh, Hadamard manifold. So it has uh, uh, non-positive curvature. So it uh, could be the Euclidean space, could be the uh, hyperbolic space or, or anything with uh, non-positive curvature. And also, we're going to assume that uh, this is uh, closed. So it's uh, compact, uh, connected, without boundary. So it's just some uh, closed surface. And uh, right, so as I had uh, mentioned last time, we have the shape operator, uh, which is given by uh, taking the derivative of uh, normal in some direction. Because the normal has unit length, this derivative will always be orthogonal to the normal. So it defines a uh, linear transformation from the tangent space of the manifold at that uh, point uh, to itself. And the second fundamental form is a uh, quadratic form defined on the tangent space is given by a Riemannian dot product of the shape operator as also Andreas Bernig was mentioning this morning. And then uh, we have the Gauss-Kronecker curvature. Gauss-Kronecker curvature is the determinant of the shape operator, or the product of all uh, principal curvatures. Uh, so this is just to recall the notation. And also, so let me again uh, repeat uh, the special case that uh, when uh, the manifold is just the uh, Euclidean space, then uh, we can take uh, these normals and uh, parallel translate them uh, to the origin. So the, uh, the normal vector field can be viewed as the uh, Gauss map. And uh, in, in this case, the shape operator is just the differential of the uh, Gauss map. Uh, okay, so okay, so this is all background. Okay, so now let me start now with uh, convexity theorems. So this these uh, start with uh, Adamar himself, eighteen ninety eight. So these are the theorems of the form that some local uh, property implies a uh, global property, the global property being a convexity. So some, some local notion of convexity leads to the conclusion that uh, gamma is uh, convex. So, um, so, uh, so Hadamar showed that uh, if uh, for a surface uh, in R3, if the Gauss Kronecker curvature is uh, strictly positive, then uh, gamma is uh, convex. So it all began uh, with this result, which is mentioned in a lot of introductory texts to uh, uh, 
uh, differential geometry has a very nice neat proof. So uh, how does this work? So because, uh, because the gas uh, curvature is non-zero, it follows from the uh, inverse function theorem that uh, nu is uh, locally one-to-one, -one, right? Determinant of the differential, if it's not zero, then by the inverse function theorem, uh, forces it to be one-to-one. Uh, -one. But uh, if you have a locally one-to-one -one map from some closed manifold to another manifold of the same dimension, then it must be a covering map. It's a covering map, but the sphere is simply connected so the only covering map of the sphere is uh, identity. So uh, nu will be one-to-one -one globally, and uh, that, uh, that implies convexity. Why? Uh, because uh, suppose the surface is not convex. So if it's not convex, then uh, there exists some tangent plane uh, with respect to which the surface lies on uh, both sides. So look at the farthest points uh, from that plane, right? You have two points that are farthest, and for at least one of those two points, uh, you're going to get the parallel uh, vector p. So injectivity of the Gauss map implies uh, convexity. So pr the proof is just as, uh, as easy as that. Uh, the next development, so this was in 1898. Uh, the next development had to uh, wait until uh, 1950s by uh, Chern Lashoff. So, but actually, yes, a actually, this nothing I said was uh, three dimensional. This argument works in uh, any dimension. Uh, Chern Lashoff, uh, they showed that uh, in R3, uh, this theorem can be generalized uh, if the gas conca curvature is merely uh, merely non-negative. Uh, okay, so, so how does this go? So this is also a uh, relatively simple argument. So to do this, uh, one uh, computes the, uh, the uh, absolute value of the gas Kronecker curvature. So if you if we integrate that, this will be the integral of the absolute value of the determinant of the um, Gauss map. So uh, by the area formula. Uh, this is what? This is the uh, integral over uh, the sphere of uh, the number of uh, free images of uh, u. So almost every value will be a regular value. So this number will be a finite number for almost every u. So this is a well-defined integral. Uh, now, I can write plus or minus u here and put the one half, okay? So uh, let's write it like that. Then it turns out that uh, this is going to be equal to uh, one half of the integral over S2 of number of uh, critical point of the height function uh, with respect to uh, u. So this uh, this is the height function defined by hu at point p, p dot u. So measures the height uh, in direction u, uh, right? It's clear. So, so if, if this is the direction u, right? Its critical points are precisely uh, the points where uh, n is equal to plus or uh, minus u, but your surface is compact. So this is always uh, bigger than or equal to two. 
which cancels out with two, so we end up with bigger than or equal to four pi. So uh, the total absolute curvature is always bigger than or equal to four pi, but uh, we can actually show that it must be equal to four pi. So uh, why is it equal to four pi? Okay, so it's actually going to be equal to four pi when uh, the gas curvature is uh, non-positive. So the surface is compact. It means that uh, you can squeeze it uh, inside the sphere at, that, at the first point of contact. It will have positive curvature at some point. So if we integrate the gas contact curvature, that integral is going to be positive but uh, by uh, gas one a, this is uh, two pi times the Euler characteristic, which implies that the Euler characteristic has to be uh, two, okay? So the total absolute curvature, uh, which is just this because it's positive, uh, it's going to be exactly equal to four pi. So as I said, uh, we're going to have uh, uh, equality there. So, so if, if this is if this is exactly equal to four pi, then it means that the number of critical points are exactly two. Okay. So, but if the number of critical points are exactly two. It's going to be two for almost every direction. Uh, that again uh, proves convexity. Yes? Because it's uh, positive, right? Yes? Uh, so, once you know the, oil, the number of critical points is two, then again, that uh, establishes convex. Okay? Zero. What? Number of critical points? Yes, because uh, it's a uh, closed surface in uh, three space. So you can uh, put it inside a uh, sphere. Then at the point of the contact, one can compare the Hessians of, uh, because the surface can be local represented, represented as a graph of a function, and the second fundamental form is just a Hessian, so it's just a Taylor series. Means that it has to be strictly positive at one point. Yes. Uh, okay, so, so, so there you have it. So this, is, this was uh, Chen Lashoff's improvement. Now notice for Chen Lashoff, it says uh, n is equal to three. So actually, uh, for n uh, bigger than three, uh, there are counterexamples. So, and the counterexamples them, uh, themselves were found by Chen Lashoff. So in higher dimensions, we need something uh, stronger than just uh, non-positive curvature, and this is something that was finally settled by uh, Sachstetter in the uh, 1960s. Uh, in 1960s, so he says that, uh, okay, so now assume that uh, uh, this is in Euclidean space of any dimension, and assume that the second uh, fundamental form uh, is uh, semi-definite at uh, each point. So semi-definite uh, means what? Means that the eigenvalues are either all non-positive or non-negative at each point. So it means that uh, there are uh, no saddle points. So it's a stronger condition than uh, the gas curvature being non-positive because that only means that uh, determinant is non-positive, that the products are non-positive. Uh, but here, uh, so I mean, so it's possible, for instance, that two of them are negative, and then you multiply, and then you get uh, positive. But here, 
they're all either have to be non-positive or non-negative. Then, so subject to this condition, uh, this can be uh, extended to uh, Rn. Now, so as you see, Hadamard theorem is just topological, and also Chern-Lashoff is uh, also you know fairly easy. But uh, this one now uh, gets uh, considerably uh, harder. So the proof of uh, this one, uh, I'm, I'm just going to uh, sketch it for you. So first, uh, so again, by compactness, uh, by compactness, uh, there will be at one point where the second fundamental form will be actually positive semi-definite. So we know that there is one point where all the uh, eigenvalues are positive. Okay, so we, we do we do have know that. And uh, so the main thing that uh, Saxter has to show, uh, which is the hard part, is uh, there exists a continuous a normal vector field uh, with respect to which uh, the second fundamental form is actually positive semi-definite. See, this condition is uh, point-wise. So, you know, it could be like positive semi-definite at some point and negative semi-definite at some other point uh, a priori. However, Back to the says that uh, this doesn't happen. So uh, this will have a consistent uh, line. So, so you see, uh, what does this mean? Uh, this means that, uh, this means that something like this doesn't happen. You see, this is, a, this is something which is locally convex, but its convexity switches size. So uh, Sachs that there, uh, Saxeter rules this out. So your surface will always be convex with respect to one side. Now, uh, if a gamma is embedded, uh, we're quickly done. So suppose now you have this embedded surface and uh, you know that uh, uh, well, if, if it's convex with respect to one side, it has to be with respect to the outward normal, meaning that, uh, I mean, uh, locally, meaning that if you look at the tangent plane at each point, the surface must lie locally on the opposite side where the uh, normal vector points. And when, once you know that global convexity is, uh, is very easy to establish, so what you do is that you take uh, any two points uh, and then uh, in the domain bounded by this, there will be some curve. Uh, connecting these two points. So you're just going to take a point on this curve and uh, just draw these line segments. So if all these line segments lie inside, you're done, right? You establish convexity. Uh, so suppose towards the contradiction that uh, all of a sudden it, it hits the boundary, right? It must be some interior point. Uh, but that's not possible by the local convexity condition. Okay? So it's just a Synthetic argument uh, uh, like that does it. Now, if gamma is immersed, uh, it requires uh, a bit more work. So if gamma is immersed, uh, then uh, uh, use method of uh, a parallel uh, moving planes. And this was actually done earlier by uh, in a paper of an uh, high in art. And this is kind of very general, doesn't even uh, require uh, smoothness. So if you have a surface which is uh, uh, immersed in uh, Euclidean space, it actually it works in any dimension. Suppose it's locally convex. Locally convex means that uh, each point has a neighborhood which lies on a convex body. And also suppose that it's locally strictly convex at some point. So at some point, that uh, convex body intersects the support plane at exactly just one point, right? We know that the strictly convex point exists. So what uh, Van Heinart showed is that uh, you start from the point which is locally strictly convex, uh, you take the support plane, and then you just move it down by a small amount. So 
So then you obtain a convex cap. Uh, now you know that the, the surface is locally convex. So using that assumption, uh, you keep going. You show that the heights at which you can push down this plane is open and closed. And while you do that, the thing on this side is uh, convex. Uh, so that uh, completes the argument. Okay, so so I, I'm building up towards the uh, Karth and Hadamard. So far, everything I said was uh, uh, Euclidean. Okay, uh, right. But uh, next, I'm, uh, next, I'm going to move into Karth and Hadamard space. But before doing that, uh, let me mention uh, the first part. So this was the uh, difficult part. So how is this proved? So the way this is proved uh, is that uh, for a Euclidean hypersurface, uh, if we look at the tangent plane, and then after a, uh, a translation and rotation, you can assume that the point of contact is at the origin, and then the uh, tangent plane coincides with uh, first uh, n minus one coordinates, so you can locally represent it as the uh, graph of a function. So in this setting, uh, the second fundamental form, let's say it's some point P of your manifold then, that you identify then with the origin of the uh, Euclidean space. This is exactly the Hessian. The Hessian is this matrix that uh, we can think of as a generating a quadratic uh, form. So semi-definiteness se semi of the Hessian is the same as the semi-definiteness of the uh, second fundamental form. Now, if we have a uh, continuous uh, choice of normal, then it means that uh, the Hessian is actually a uh, uh, positive uh, definite uh, in a neighborhood. So if this is positive definite uh, in a neighborhood, of uh, zero, so this is just a very basic convexity. Uh, it follows that F is uh, convex. So this is a local. This is a characterization of a uh, convex function. Uh, so, so that's why uh, constructing this normal vector field continuously establishes uh, local convexity. Okay, but now how does one show this vector field? So what uh, Sackstetter does is that uh, look at uh, gamma. So this is look at gamma and look at the regions where the uh, second fundamental form identically vanishes. That is all the eigenvalues are zero. So Sackstetter shows that uh, these regions are in fact uh, convex planar sets. There could be multiple components, but they're all convex planar sets, right? So if it's a convex planar set, uh, it doesn't matter which direction you choose V. It will be uh, locally convex with this, this direction, locally convex with the other direction, and uh, elsewhere, there will always be a uh, non-zero eigenvalue. So elsewhere, you have exactly one choice for the choice of nu, and elsewhere is connected because each of these components is contractible. So you just, uh, once you remove these, uh, we have a unique choice for nu, which then can be extended to all of these sets. So the hard part is to show that uh, these regions where the second fundamental form identically vanishes are these uh, convex uh, planar curve, which is the uh, majority of his paper. Okay, so now with this background, let me finally move to Carton uh, Havamar manifolds. Well, actually, uh, right, so before that, uh, we move to uh, uh, hyperbolic space. So the Karma Warner, then a few years, this is now like 1970s. It's like every step, you know, would take a, like a decade somehow. But the, the, the Karma Warner, it's a simple observation. So uh, this uh, Hadamard, uh, uh, Chen Lashoff, Sackstetter, I mean all this work that culminated in the work of uh, Sackstetter, all of these hold 
in a hyperbolic space. But uh, the reason they, ho they hold in hyperbolic space, I mean, this is a simple observation. It's due to the uh, Klein uh, Beltrami uh, model. Uh, in, in the Klein Beltrami model, the geodesics are not these uh, circular segments, but actually are straight line segments. So it's a, it's a projective model. Uh, it preserves convexity, and it preserves the sign of the second fundamental form. So it very quickly follows from that. Okay, so now finally, uh, it's 1980s now. And uh, so this result of uh, Stephanie uh, Alexander. So now in Carlton Hadwell manifolds, what do we know? So she showed that uh, if gamma is in M and on Adamar, but she also assumed that uh, this guy is a uh, positive semi-definite uh, with respect to a continuous normal. So this is a uh, big assumption. Uh, she assumes that uh, the convexity does not uh, switch sides. Okay, so uh, if that's the case, then uh, if your surface is embedded, then this argument, uh, this classical argument quickly shows that uh, the surface must be convex. So in this context, really the only thing that uh, uh, is not clear is the immersed case. So that's what her paper is about. And uh, she uses uh, uh, Ralph's theorem in uh, Riemannian geometry. So, so again, here uh, we know that uh, there exists a consistent convex direction. Uh, so she, uh, she starts with this uh, vector field nu. Uh, the surface is compact, so she puts it in a big sphere in the manifold. Now we obtain a mapping from the hypersurface this sphere by Rack's comparison theorem, because the curvature is non-positive, this mapping will be locally one-to-one. -one. Then, just like that argument, it's going to be a covering map, which forces this mapping to be one-to-one. -one. Okay, the fact that it's one-to-one -one forces it to be uh, embedded. Why? Because suppose it's not embedded. Okay, it's not embedded like this part, for instance, and just move this part along these normals. So when you do that, this part is going to become tangent to some of the old parts, which is going to uh, 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 contradict this one-to-one -one, uh, assumption. Okay, now, yes, 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 gamma, so it should be, I guess, N minus one, yeah, yes. Okay, uh, okay, very good. Okay, now, so now you have the whole history. Now, uh, the good part, so open problem. So I've told you, this basically summarizes everything that's known really about uh, these local to global convexity problems and uh, uh, differential geometry in Euclidean space, and this is also state of the art in Carden Hadmart, but you see this is uh, really it's too big of an assumption. So the open problem is, uh, so just take a two-dimensional surface in a three-dimensional uh, carton uh, Hadamard uh, manifold and uh, assume that uh, the gas Kornika curvature is uh, non-positive, uh, does it follow that uh, gamma is uh, uh, convex? Completely open. It's completely open, 125 years after uh, Hadamar proved the exact same thing in uh, Euclidean space. And uh, even in dimension three, it's not clear how to generalize it. 
Oh, oh sorry. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, no, no. In, in, in hyperbolic space, it's done. I mean the three-dimensional cartan hadamard Yes, in cartan hadamard even in the dimension three, uh, it's completely open. So this is the picture. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Not for you guys, but for me, who spent all my life studying the convexity, you know, the notions, it's quite embarrassing. So, uh, sorry, which argument are you talking about? Yes. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, yes, in fact, the Dukarma Warner paper also addressed the positive curvature. Yes. Yeah, yes, that's right. Um, that's right. So, so the the approach of Saxe there could be more fruitful. So, if if one can show what Saxon did in this context, that would be enough. So it would be sufficient to show that the regions where the second fundamental form is identically zero are contractible. Uh, but the problem is that uh, you know, no longer we have a hyperplanes where we can uh, represent the function, uh, the surface as a graph of a function. So uh, somehow a more intrinsic approach would be needed. But if one can show this, then that solved that problem. Okay, so, so this takes care of the first part of the talk, the convexity theorems. Uh, now uh, the rigidity theorems, and I had uh, mentioned this before, so there's this uh, theorem uh, discovered uh, more or less at the same time by Gromov and then by, uh, independently by uh, Green Wu. Uh, which I mentioned last time, that uh, if you have, uh, if M is a, a CH uh, a manifold of uh, dimension N bigger than or equal to uh, three, and uh, K, uh, uh, the sectional curvature vanishes uh, outside a compact set uh, in M, then, uh, uh, the sectional uh, curvature vanishes uh, everywhere, meaning that uh, uh, your manifold is a Euclidean space. Uh, and bigger than or equal to zero, uh, three, interestingly, uh, is uh, important. For n equals two, is not true. Uh, you can take like a saddle surface, uh, and then you can like attach rays to it, and you can construct, uh, or, or you can take a cone. You can take a cone where the angle is more than uh, two pi, and then you can smooth that singularity with negative curvature. But uh, we have this uh, remarkable rigidity fact which characterizes uh, the Euclidean space in, uh, uh, among cartan hadamard manifolds. Um, okay, so now this rigidity somehow is also uh, connected with the uh, notion of uh, total positive curvature that I'm going to, uh, sorry, total total positive or, or total absolute curvature when you uh, integrate the absolute value of the gauss particle curvature. So uh, by the, the argument that I uh, sketched over there, um, Chern and Lashoff actually proved something uh, stronger. I mean, it's essentially the same argument I have there. So they showed that if you have a closed surface in uh, R3, then uh, its total absolute curvature is always bigger than uh, four pi and uh, equality holds uh, if and only if a gamma is uh, convex. That is, they do not uh, a priori uh, restrict the topology of the surface. So, in uh, 1985, this is uh, in the book of uh, Gromov, uh, Bauman, Gromov, and uh, Schroeder, so there is this uh, problem or exercise. It states basically that uh, Chern Lashoff uh, inequality uh, holds 
in uh, CH manifolds of uh, dimension three uh, with uh, equality only when a gamma bounds a flat uh, convex body. Okay, so, so chern lashoff gives us convexity. In the carton hazemar uh, you get more than convexity. So not only uh, gamma will be convex, but uh, uh, k will be zero. So this generalizes the rigidity theorem, right? Because you can always put a, a sphere uh, around the uh, compact set. Okay, so uh, this, uh, so I was able to prove this recently, uh, assuming that the surface is uh, simply connected. And uh, so it follows from a, uh, a general result that I'm going to prove uh, tomorrow, but this corollary I will prove uh, today. So theorem, so this will be the uh, last uh, lecture. I will prove in uh, lecture uh, number four. So this theorem states that uh, if we have a closed surface in, uh, in the carton hadmar manifold, so this is uh, again back to uh, n dimension, and the uh, second fundamental form we assume is uh, positive semi-definite. So again, this is point-wise, none of this uh, uh, you know, continuous choice of normal. So, so this this condition really means infinitesimally convex. So if you have this thing that's infinitesimally convex, and uh, Km uh, vanishes on tangent planes of uh, gamma, okay? If we have uh, these conditions, then gamma bounds a uh, convex uh, flat uh, body, okay? Uh, so this is the theorem to come uh, uh, tomorrow, but today I will uh, establish uh, the uh, corollary. So the corollary is the solution to Gromov problem when the uh, surface is simply connected. So corollary is a solution to Gromov when uh, gamma is uh, uh, simply connected. Uh, so it's a topological sphere or uh, has Euler characteristics. So, okay, so this is the proof of the uh, corollary, the, the proof follows quickly from that. It's just uh, Gauss's equation and uh, gauss one theorem will do it. So uh, gauss Kornecker curvature at the point by uh, Gauss's uh, equation that uh, uh, Andreas Bernig also mentioned in the morning and I had uh, used a, a number of times yesterday. This is equal to the curvature, is equal to the sectional curvature of gamma at point P minus the curvature of the ambient space with respect to the tangent plane of uh, gamma at point P. So as I mentioned before, if you're in a Euclidean space, this is just the Gauss's theorem aggregate, which states that the extrinsic curvature is the same as intrinsic curvature. So because uh, this thing is uh, non-positive, this is going to be bigger than or equal to K uh, gamma P, so we have this uh, inequality. So in a, uh, the absolute curvature uh, integral is going to be, well, this is always bigger than the uh, regular integral, we know that, but because of this integral, uh, because of this inequality, this is going to be bigger than the integral of the sectional curvature, and uh, which is, four pi by uh, gas one a. So here, here is where I use the simply connectedness assumption. 
So this is 4 pi, uh, right? So the channel action of inequality holds, but the important part is the equality case. So now suppose that uh, equality holds, okay? So suppose that it's equal to uh, 4 pi. So if, uh, if uh, equality holds, then uh, what do we get? Then, then it follows that uh, uh, th then all these inequalities, uh, so, so if this and this are equal, then uh, all the intermediate inequalities are also equalities. So in particular, we get that uh, this thing is non-positive and uh, this is going to imply that the second fundamental form is uh, semi-definite because n is equal to three. Right, so uh, if the determinant is a non-negative, means that the eigenvalues cannot assume uh, opposite signs. So we have that, but then equality, uh, if you look at over here, if the equality holds, then also actually we're going to have equality here, which means that uh, these things have to be zero. So this implies that uh, uh, the curvature of the ambient space on the, um, Tangent planes uh, vanish, so it satisfies uh, both uh, uh, criteria of the theorem. So by the theorem, gamma is uh, convex and bounds a uh, flat. Uh, okay, so uh, gas money, right? That's where I had to assume simply connectedness. However. If someone here could please solve uh, this problem, okay, <laughs> then uh, then we don't uh, uh, then actually uh, we can solve Gromov problem in all cases, right? So remember that problem says that if the gas quantum curvature is non-negative, your surface is convex. If it's convex, then it's automatically simply connected, and. Uh, you see, when equality holds, we get for free that this is uh, bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's why it's another reason why uh, that would be an important problem. Okay, so uh, right, so so proving this will be the subject of lecture number four, and it uses uh, really nice uh, techniques. Uh, I might say, I mean, I, I, I might say that because actually they were outlined by uh, Petrone. Uh, these really nice techniques from uh, theory of cat k spaces and Alexander of geometry. So the, the proof will be uh, quite synthetic. There's one, pl one place where I use uh, Gauss and Kodatsi equations, which has uh, uh, involves computations, but the rest of it will be actually a very uh, nice geometric argument. Okay, now uh, in the remainder, remaining time that I have, uh, let me mention also another thing about the higher genus uh, version of this problem that uh, remains uh, uh, open. So, so for the higher genus case, uh, so uh, I can, for the higher genus case, I can prove the inequality, I'll, I will show you. But I don't know how to take care of the equality, okay? So this is a two part problem, you wanna show that uh, the total absolute curvature is bigger than four pi, and equality holds only when it's convex and it's a bounded flat region. I don't know how to do the equality case in the higher genus, but just the uh, inequality uh, can be uh, established for uh, any genus. So, uh, uh, so this always holds. Um, for any genus. So uh, the argument, so this is the last thing I'm going to uh, uh, sketch. So the argument is as follows. We, we, uh, it involves a, a convex uh, Hall trick. So take your surface, gamma, and replace it by the boundary of its convex Hall. 
So uh, gamma zero is the boundary of the convex hull of uh, gamma, okay? And uh, let's have some notation. So, so this is like script G, uh, the same notation as in my paper. So let's, uh, so this will be uh, the total curvature and let's put a little tilde on it. Uh, if it's the absolute curvature, okay? So now uh, the total curvature of uh, gamma zero. So uh, see the convex hull a priori, we don't know how regular it is. But uh, as I mentioned uh, in a, a previous talk and also it came up in uh, uh, Bernick's talk, if your surface is not uh, regular, its uh, curvature can be defined as the limit of the outer uh, parallel surfaces. So we can take the uh, convex hull and go outside uh, by distance to epsilon. This will always yield a, a C11 surface. So by Rademacher's theorem, it's twice differential almost everywhere, so its Gaussian curvature is defined almost everywhere as an integrable, and this quantity exists. And also, I showed you by the comparison formula that uh, I showed you yesterday, this is a monotonic quantity. It's always decreasing. So this, uh, this notion then is well-defined. So now, note that uh, these guys, what are these guys? So again, we're going to use uh, Gauss's equation. So by Gauss's equation, these guys are again uh, integrals of the uh, sectional curvature minus uh, integrals of the ambient curvature on the uh, tangent planes. So, uh, but uh, I know that the convex hull is simply connected. So the gauss bonnet theorem now applies. See, I can always apply the gauss bonnet theorem to the convex hull. So I get uh, this uh, lower bound uh, by pi. This is for every epsilon, right? So it implies that uh, uh, gamma zero is uh, bigger than uh, four pi. So the convex hull has four pi. Now, so finally, uh, let, uh, let this symbol uh, G plus of gamma be the uh, total curvature, be, be the integral of the gas contour curvature over the places where the gas contour curvature is uh, positive or, or, or non-negative. Now, the total absolute curvature, this is always bigger than the total positive curvature, of course, right? Now, this is going to be bigger than the curvature computed on gamma intersect uh, gamma zero. See, at all points where gamma lies uh, on the boundary of the convex hull, the curvature is going to be uh, non-negative. So we have this inequality. Now, this uh, turns out uh, to be equal to the total curvature of gamma zero. And this was shown by uh, Kleiner. This is something that's obvious in uh, Euclidean space. Uh, the pieces of the convex hull, which does not lie on the uh, original object, these, these portions, there's always a line segment passing through that in Euclidean space. In a uh, cotton hadamard manifold, one can uh, show that uh, the curvature of these areas uh, vanish. Um, uh, Kleiner has a very brief argument for that, but in my paper with Joel Spruck, there's actually an entire section where we um, uh, explain that in, uh, in great detail. So we have this uh, equality, but we already showed that this was bigger than four pi. So uh, the inequality holds uh, for all a genus, but then the uh, the mysterious part is uh, the equality case. The equality case, unfortunately, I don't know how to do for the higher genus. Okay, thank you. Thanks for attention.